Okay, Joe, I'm going to show you quickly what I would do with a shot like this. Um, but first of all, let me say it's a beautiful photo, a very cute child. Um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's worth kind of persevering to try and save it. But it's one of the reasons that you really should be looking to shoot raw more often. Because uh, when you blow out the highlights like you have on the hats here on a bright sunny day, uh, it's very hard to get them back with a JPEG shot. So if you shoot raw, it's much easier to get back. You've got a lot more information to work with, but I'm sure you know that by now. Um, but I'm just going to quickly show you something in Lightroom and then I'll go into Photoshop CS5. But first of all, in Lightroom and in Photoshop CS5, the raw editing software, you've got um, a recovery uh, slider here which will recover blown highlights. Now, I know this works in Lightroom on JPEGs, but I don't think it works in um, in the conversion software for, for the CS5, for the raw. Uh, you can only load raw images, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to double check that. But the way it works in here, if even if I was to slide this up to 100%, it's recovered a lot of the other blown highlights or made the photo a bit darker but you can see here you've still lost that detail in parts of the hat but it has done a reasonable job uh, you've also got a bit of purple fringing there as well but won't go into that now um, but that really doesn't do the job that I'd want it doesn't recover it enough plus it kind of flattens out all the tones and everything and the contrast the other way to do it is to use the exposure button which I will use um, and I'll use that in Photoshop and the way I would do it is actually look at the main body here and bring it down to a point where it's uh, more more acceptable if you like but I, I will come back to this in a second but I just want to show you something even if I brought the exposure right down you can see we've still got the blown highlights and there's still unrecoverable kind of details in the shot there so that just kind of shows that um, we're not able to fully pull back the highlights but obviously there are things we can do so I'm gonna whip into Photoshop now and work on it in there so I'm gonna close Lightroom and go into Photoshop and you can see here I've got the photo open in Photoshop now the first thing I'm going to do is actually bring the brightness down so if I go to brightness contrast and then bring the brightness down like I said to a point where the body and the the main part of the image looks good so if I bring that down to maybe about there in fact if I bring it all the way down you can see even the arms got blown highlights that are going to be very hard to get back those sort of details so if I bring this down to a point where it's not looking too bad on the arms although you might have to do some cloning work on that uh, let's bring it to about there I think it's still going to show this purple on the arms or this this kind of red redness on the arms if I bring it to about there and just increase the brightness a bit you can see we've already brought that down quite a bit and the, the image looks a lot better a lot kind of darker but obviously as we're darkening it we're darkening the face and everything as well so if I leave it at that for now then what I'm going to do is select all the highlights so if I go to select color range select highlights from the drop down menu and click OK I've now selected all the highlights but I, I need to feather this um, because if I work on the highlight sorry I'm not working on the highlights I want to work on the, sh the sh shaded details that I've just brought down so if I right click and select inverse I've now selected everything other than the highlights that I'm going to work on uh, to bring back those that, that, that stuff that I just brought down too much so if I now uh, if I was to actually work on it now you'd get obvious areas if I show you what I mean if I work on the levels and brought those up it's very obvious where I've worked you can see the lines down here where I've where I've been working so what we need to do is feather that now for this size of image um, it all depends on the size of image how much you actually feather but for this one I'm going to feather by a hundred pixels if it was a full resolution image um, huge photo I'd maybe use the, the full 250 radius if it was a small image for the web maybe 20 uh, pixels but let's do a hundred so now I've selected all the everything other than the highlights and we feathered it as well so if I now go to image adjustments and levels I can actually use the midtones to bring up the midtone slider in the middle here just to bring back those midtone highlights again click OK and we've now got a slightly better image but obviously the contrast has been lost so we can then go back into image brightness contrast and just increase the contrast a little bit but also go into the levels you can see here we've got a gap at the lower end so if we bring that across it's increased the levels a bit no, sorry the contrast a bit we're still going to keep this blown highlights we're not going to do anything about those unfortunately what you could do and I'll show you in a minute is to clone those details back in from somewhere else but already the photo is looking a bit better um, but the face is looking a little bit dark it would look nice to be brightened up slightly but I think the body and everything else looks quite good uh, we can also adjust the, um, the saturation on the, the image a bit but at the moment I think it looks quite good now to bring the highlights of the face back up you can actually use the, the highlight tool um, set it to mid-tones or, or highlights um, whichever you prefer set the exposure to around sort of five percent because you don't want to overdo it and select a brush big enough to, to kind of cover the face I'm going to try on the mid-tones first just to see what it does and um, see what kind of 
detail we can bring back and you can see it's just bringing back that detail enough to to brighten the face enough to, to make it stand out like it should uh, if we go before and after you can see there the difference is made oh, I can't go forward again but if we do that again you can see that it uh, just brightens up ever so slightly so you can bring that brightness back using that tool but do it in slow increments don't kind of set the uh, exposure too high set it to around four or five percent and then slowly bring the details of the face back uh, another way to do it if you had um, any of Kubota's tools there's one I particularly like in his Photoshop Action Pack 2 and that is the digital fill in flash um, if I go to here uh, it's in Action Pack 2 and if I double click that it actually allows me to just increase the shad shaded areas uh, without touching anything else so if I set that running start painting where you need to uh, add light it's set automatically to an opacity of 30% and a flow of 100% so let's just see what that does that won't touch the highlights but it will touch the, the shaded areas as though you're um, adding a kind of fill in flash it's actually pretty good it's one of my most used tools of theirs so I'd leave it to about there and then I'd flatten the layer because that does create a layer and it's not done a bad job at all really so to be honest that's about as far as you can get with that kind of shot but let's just increase the contrast a little bit more with the levels just to make it pop a little bit more but that's that's about as far as I would go with that photo but obviously it's quite a big difference to the shot originally you can see there that's the original shot um, as posted on the site and that's the slightly worked on shot now like I said shooting raw would make this a lot easier but they're just basic things that you can do to get the image back if you wanted desperately to get these highlights back um, you could use the healing brush select an area of the hat where you know the details good click alt left click and then just paste over and put those details back in and it should do a reasonable job let's do the same up here and just put some detailing up there that's cool and then let's pick this bit here and put some bits in up there most people that look at the photo won't notice what's meant to be there and what isn't meant to be there so you can just fill in the highlights fill in the blown highlights like that and you've pretty much done the job with that if you did want to get rid of these um, purple fringing you can just use the uh, marquee selection tool or it's the, the lasso tool go around this bit of the hat just select all of that part of the hat and then feather it again I'm going to 100 um, so that's selected a lot of that kind of purple uh, NIS if you like and then we go to image adjustments where are you do, 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 do. A hue saturation then I'm going to select magentas from the drop down menu saturation right down and you can see that just disappears or well, most of it's disappeared if I go before and after you can see they've pretty much gone so that's got rid of those it's added the details back and it's made the photo look quite a bit better than it was before so i hope that helps um, if you've got any questions just drop me a line